Today, we are going to learn about uh, Davison Germer experiment. This is one of the important uh, experiment performed by two scientists called Clinton Davison and Lester Germer in 1927. Here, the main important thing is <coughs> Louis D. Broglie hypothesis of matter waves was experimentally confirmed by Clinton Davison and Lester Germer in 1927. They demonstrated that electron beams are diffracted when they fall on the crystalline solids. Crystalline solids means here we have taken nickel. Again I will repeat, they demonstrated that electron beams are diffracted here, that electron beams are diffracted by the crystal. And these crystalline solids, they act as a three dimensional diffraction grating for matter waves. Matter waves means electron beam. Here, the electron waves incident on the crystals are diffracted in certain specific directions. And here, this picture that shows the schematic representation of the apparatus for the experiment. Are you clear? So, the purpose of conducting the experiment is, uh, de Broglie hypothesis of matter waves was experimentally confirmed by this experiment, okay. Now we are going to see the working nature of the Davison and Germer experiment, okay. Now I will explain the uh, parts of the uh, experimental arrangement. You have to understand the parts one by one, how it works, all those things to be learnt one by one. The filament F that is made up of tungsten that is heated by a low tension battery and electrons are emitted from the hot filament by thermionic emission. Then they are accelerated due to the, they are accelerated due to the which one? This potential difference between the filament and the anode. In between the filament and anode, one high tension battery is connected because of this high tension battery, very high potential difference is set up here and electron beam is collimated and accelerated by this aluminum cylinder. And electron beam is collimated by these two diaphragm. So the collimated electrons are accelerated by the anode that is nothing but that is made up of aluminum cylinder. Are you clear? Finally, these electron beams, they are allowed to strike on the single crystal of nickel, a single crystal of nickel to be taken on which the electron beam is made to clear incident on the nickel crystal. Are you clear? Now what happens now? The electrons are scattered by the nickel atoms in different directions and they are received by the electron detector. Are you clear? The scattered electrons are detected with the help of the electron detector. This one measures the intensity of the scattered electron beam. The electron detector, that one measures the intensity of the scattered electron beam. The detector is capable of rotation on the plane of the board. This one can be moved here and there. So the detector is capable of rotating on the plane of the board so that the angle between the incident beam and the scattered beam theta can be measured. Are you clear? Now the intensity of the scattered beam, the intensity of the scattered beam is measured as a function of theta. The intensity of the scattered beam, it is measured as a function of theta. Because with respect to theta, the intensity it varies. Are you clear? Now we can draw a graph between uh, theta and intensity of the scattered beam. Are you clear? Here we have drawn a graph, that graph is drawn between the scattering angle and intensity of the scattered electron beam. The intensity of scattered electron beam that varies with respect to the scattering angle. How the graph is drawn? So, this graph is drawn for a particular accelerating potential 
that is applied between cathode and anode. In between the cathode and anode, 54 volt must be supplied. This is the accelerating potential that is given. By the time this graph is drawn, are you clear? So here this is the incident electron beam that is passing through the crystal. Some of the electron they are scattered from the surface. Some of the electrons they are passing through the crystal due to diffraction. They are bending clear around the atom. After getting diffracted again they are coming out from the crystal. So the scattered electron and diffracted electron both are interfering with one another and both of them will interfere due to constructive interference they may cause the high intensity electron at a particular angle. That high intensity electron can be detected with the help of electron detector. The high intensity electron beam that can be uh, obtained at a particular angle is clear for this particular voltage. When the high tension voltage is accelerating voltage is 54 volt is clear for this particular voltage is clear at 50 degree maximum intensity electron can be obtained. Note down this two value 54 volt is applied between cathode and anode for this particular accelerating potential the scattering angle must be 50 degree at 50 degree we are able to get the maximum intensity electron you can move it clear you can move the electron detector clear in this direction clear exactly at 50 degree we are able to get the peak the clear peak means high intensity electron can be obtained that's why i have marked 50 degree here are you clear now by knowing the value of 50 degree we are able to calculate the wavelength of the electron for that we can use the uh, Bragg's equation 2d sin theta is equal to L lambda. This is one of the formula obtained from Bragg's equation. Here D is called interplanar distance in between two nickel layers. They are all atoms of the nickel. No, this is the first layer of nickel. This is the second layer of nickel. In between these two layers, that distance is called interplanar distance. By knowing the interplanar distance, by knowing the value of the glancing angle, we are able to calculate the wavelength of the uh, which one the electrons are you clear the wavelength of electron obtained from the wavelength of the electron that is obtained from Bragg's equation will be around 1.65 Armstrong unit this is the answer obtained from Bragg's equation are you clear in Bragg's equation there is a factor called D by knowing the value of interplanar spacing in the case of nickel, we are able to obtain the value. Are you clear? Now, we are going to calculate the same de Broglie wavelength by using another formula. Okay. Now, we are going to get the de Broglie wavelength of electron by using this accelerating potential. One more formula is there that is nothing but lambda is equal to 12.27 Armstrong unit divided by square root of V. Here V is nothing but accelerating potential which is applied in between cathode and anode. Here that V value is 54 volt. So substitute here lambda is equal to 12.27 Armstrong unit divided by square root of 54 can be substituted. After calculation you will be getting the answer around 1.67 Armstrong unit. So this is the de Broglie wavelength of electron obtained by using the accelerating potential value. This is the value obtained from Bragg's equation that is with the help of angle theta. Are you clear? This is the answer obtained from accelerating potential. So the answer obtained from Bragg's equation and the answer obtained from this formula both are almost same. Therefore, the wavelength, de Broglie wavelength of this matter wave, electron wave, electron beam is confirmed by which one? The Davison and Germer experiment. Okay.